Good afternoon, everyone. We're really glad to see you on our channel. And uh, I'm Alexandra Kova, Legal Advisor of Denver and Partners Legal Council. So today, I would like to share with you a few insights on how to start your business in Russia. And first of all, let me share my PPT with you. So moving forward, a few words about law firm. These are the main services that we provide for our clients. These are our best sellers. You may see here legal compliance, corporate m and environmental compliance, IPR protection, dispute resolution, and of course, we do assist our clients for foreign direct investment. These are a few offices that present each all over the world. And here you may see our Shanghai office where I'm currently presenting and speaking with you. So, how to start a business in Russia? These are three main stages that we face with our clients when they decide to start a business in Russia. First of all, we assist them in taking a decision for the investment idea. You may need to understand how you see in future your presence in Russia. What will be the services, what will be the products that you would like to uh, put on the market? Then, based on the sectors that you would like to be presented, we, with uh, my colleagues, uh, will develop investment strategy with you. Uh, because sometimes you may need to do merge with our company, who, which, for example, already presented on the market for a certain period of time, or you may need to set up a certain companies that will be different in the business scope to be present on market and provide the services or sell the products that you would like to due to the certain regulations. And after, we will have this picture of the future actions that you, we may need to take uh, to help you to be present in the Russian market. We'll prepare the documents, we'll take active actions and uh, complete all the procedures that you may need to face. So, starting from the first stage, and development of the investment idea or decision on the business industries. As we currently, I'm currently presented in China, I would make a bit of comparison with the Chinese regulations. So maybe the Chinese uh, people that currently listen and watching this video would uh, understand a bit, this a bit more. So, uh, compared to China, Russian regulation do not provide for such clear negative uh, list of uh, uh, the sectors that are prohibited for or restricted for foreign investor. Uh, we actually have, and we do not have uh, such a big range of, uh, wide range of sectors that are restricted for the foreign investor. Um, we actually in Russia have a federal law on foreign investment in uh, companies of strategic importance of national defense and state security, which uh, provide for certain limitations for the foreign investors to invest in sectors that could be sensitive in regard to national defense and state security. Actually, I think the idea is quite similar to China, but the range of the sectors that are limited for investors are not so. There are not so many sectors that are limited for investor. And all the sectors or that are limited may be categorized in four main uh, types as natural resources, which may, may include extraction of oil, for example, or development of uh, new areas. Also, defense, uh, like arms, uh, arms sectors, arms industry, radioactive materials, um, aviation and friction and security assessment, civilians of infrastructure and means of transport, media, which include television, radio broadcasting, natural monopolies, which actually include uh, railway operations, gambling, alcohol and tobacco manufacturing. So if you would see yourself on Russian market and within this interested, so next uh, uh, few minutes, this information will be relevant for you. A uh, law prescribed for certain prohibitions for the certain types of investors, which uh, actually are foreign public investors, including uh, the foreign government, international organizations, and here also state-owned enterprise, 
and non-disclosed investors. As you may know, uh, going step into the Russian market, company would need to disclose the information regarding the beneficiaries, beneficial owners, and controlling persons. And these companies that would uh, not uh, like to provide this information to authorities would be included in such type of foreign investors and non-disclosed investors. So these two types of investors are actually prohibited uh, from obtaining control over the strategic entities. What means uh, control? Uh, I shall describe to you below. Uh, for the foreign public and non-disclosed investors, the control upon the strategic entity would mean acquiring of more than 25% of control and shares. Or if we're speaking about this strategic entities conducting geological study and recovery of resources from such sort of block of federal importance, it means quite um, big uh, such sort of blocks, which are also listed upon the specific uh, regulations of federal law, uh, are restricted, well, would gain the control and actually restricted for the investment. If you as investor are not uh, within these two categories, so you may be categorized as the foreign private investors, and for you, there may, may be the requirement to go for the prior approval uh, for the case if you would gain uh, control of the strategic entity. And as a foreign private investor, for you, the question that you would, that you may gain this uh, control, would be in cases if you acquire 50 uh, percent of controlling shares, of voting shares, in uh, the strategic entity, or 25 percent of shares if we talk about subsoil strategic entity. And also, as you can see, there is a six cases of uh, such control. But in most of the cases, we're talking about 50 percent of controlling shares, of controlling uh, of um, uh, the management board or 25% uh, if we talk about the strategic, uh, subsoil strategic entity. So for those who are into these categories, you may need to face the procedure that I present you on this uh, next slide. So first of all, you need to file all the documents, including uh, the disclosure information about the beneficiaries of the companies, the actual beneficiaries of the mother company, I mean, uh, to the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service, disclosing the information upon uh, the transaction that will take place. And in case anti-monopoly, and then uh, there could be three cases. First of all, the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service uh, will list out all the documents and will take the decision that there is no question of the control. So all the docu uh, according to uh, the provided information, the company, now I'd like to, to be presented in these strategic sectors would not gain control over the strategic entity. So uh, it would give its resolution to you and then you can uh, go forward with the transaction. Or uh, based on information that was that uh, was provided, I don't want to monopolize service would already understand that, okay, there would be the control and actually you cannot gain the control. So we're talking here about the public investor so government, national organization, or we're talking here about non-disclosure investor. And there can be the third. So uh, you would be, uh, these investors would be restricted, the transaction cannot take place, and in case uh, the transaction will take place, um, even if it would not be, if it wasn't approved, it would be deemed as void. And uh, there can be this third case that you fall into the, for example, private investor category, and you, uh, well, based on the information that you provided, there is uh, potential that you gain the control of the company. So such transactions shall gain a prior approval. So we go to the next level of the government commission that actually will take the decision whether to approve or not approve the transaction. And the case. Uh, and I told uh, if transaction would not be approved uh, and it will take place, such transaction will be in this void. And uh, in case it will be approved, so you may go further with the transaction. But uh, as I told before, the industries that are limited for the foreign investors are actually not, not so wide. 
the, not so many of them. So uh, in most of the cases, uh, the investor would just need to understand which industries uh, he would like to be presented and go with the decision of the form of the business. And here, uh, we in our practice face three types. First, uh, you would actually would like to be present in Russia with uh, the individual legal entity or in, in, with your branch or representative office, or uh, some companies would like to go with the merge and acquisition. As I told before, sometimes there is even need to go uh, through these procedures rather than to establish your own company in Russia. Or if uh, the client just would like to understand uh, potential of the own servicing products for the market, for the Russian market, uh, we can assist uh, under the cooperation with some agents that may uh, provide, that may the services of advertisement of your products on the market. Or you may go through the cooperation with distributors under the civil contracts. But currently, we've, uh, we've faced more potential in establishment of new legal entity. And uh, we, in your further presentation, we actually will discuss uh, how to open your company. Here, I would like to point out that, already would like to point out that most of our clients go with the form of limited liability company and or joint stock company, but most common is limited liability company. So first of all, you would need to prepare all the uh, documents and the basic documents you can uh, see here on the slides. So it's notarized memorandum and articles of association, uh, registration application form that actually shall be signed in front of the notary. Uh, if you are able to do all the procedures in Russia, yes, it will be uh, quite easy. In case you would like to do all the procedures smoothly, you may go with the consulate, Russian consulate that based in, in your own country for this specific action. Uh, then we also would need to get information of the director, uh, the person that would, appoint, would be appointed on the position of the director, and also for the whole shareholders, uh, it means you know, for the private person, uh, the passport information, for passport information, and for legal entities, all the information about the uh, statutes, memorandum, uh, business license, um, uh, all rel relevant information. Also, we would need to provide it to registration uh, authorities during the letter from the future tenant of the offices uh, and title of deed in order to uh, verify that uh, these exact address may be used of the premises, may be used as registered address. And also we would prepare the QA uh, if you would like to do all uh, the procedure remotely with us. Uh, step number two, uh, lease premises. Uh, of course, already on the step of the preparation of basic documents, we, would, we may provide you also the service of scouting for the office that you may like to take uh, for your company. And uh, on this step, we also uh, may enter into the preliminary lease agreement in order to secure your rights uh, to further rent these facilities. And uh, after all the procedures will be done, so the entity will be established, we'll also uh, enter to the proper lease agreement with the tenant. And uh, also, uh, we need to, to open a bank account. So here you can see under the step three. You uh, may need already open a bank account to further inject the capital into your company. Under step four, where when all the documents are already prepared, we would need to submit them to their registration authorities. And uh, based according to the law, we can do this remotely uh, via the post service um, agencies or um, most of the cases we just go there and do on-site submission. And then step five, uh, when all the documents actually uh, reviewed by the authorities and decision and approved, uh, we will help you to get your business license, uh, to, uh, which will verify that you 
establish archaeological presence in Russia. But uh, these are not uh, all stages that will uh, give you the opportunity to operate. As I already talked with previously, in certain industries, you may need to go through licensing procedures to operate, uh, to legally operate. So the, uh, also, you would need to register in tax uh, authorities, you would need to work a company seals, you would need to register in social insurance bureau, pension fund, migration bureau, if you would like to, uh, the last one, if you would like to uh, hire a foreign police. So these all um, are the stages that you, would, uh, that you will have to take to make a company operate. So these are the main information that we would like to share with you uh, regarding the topic how to start your business in Russia. And uh, thank you for being here with us and I hope to see you uh, in our next videos. Have a good day and if you have any questions, please uh, go and uh, leave them below in the comments or just write us directly uh, to our address that also will be left in the comments below.